Okay. 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 We gotta stop thinking we're funny because we're not. I mean, we kind of are though. We're, we're freaking hilarious. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay. <coughs> the problem is I don't know how to start it. Welcome back to the Two Tomes. I'm Nora. And I'm Brielle. And this is our best books of 2021 video. And it's a little bit behind. We acknowledge that. But as long as it's before the end of 2022, I think I think we'll be fine. So it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So I'll start with Heartstopper. Yeah. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oy vey. We're gonna have to edit this a lot. <laughs> okay. So, my first book that I want to talk about is Heartstopper. Which is actually one that we both read. Basically, this follows two British boys, Nick and Charlie, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> you gonna say anything else about the, the plot? <laughs> I don't know how to do these videos. Okay. Oh no. So basically, Nick and Charlie both go to the same school and they end up falling in love and so this follows their romance yes this is very quick to read and i feel like it's very easy to recommend to people because it's literally a graphic novel and each one is i don't know like 200 pages or something so it's very oh no 350 so it's very accessible very very chill i feel like if you're one of those people that says they don't read books but secretly actually just reads fan fiction this is for you also, there's a TV <laughs> show coming out this very year. Yes, which we're very ecstatic about. My first book is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. Uh, this follows a boy named Laszlo Strange and his interactions with a city known only as Weep. When he was younger, all of a sudden he couldn't remember the name of this city, and so he becomes obsessed with trying to learn more about it. I really liked this book because I thought it was just so unique and interesting. Like, it's something that hasn't been done before. The magic system is not entirely different, but different enough, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. And I love Laszlo. He has a sense of adventure. He goes out, learns new things, isn't scared to say what he likes, even when those around him are mean to him about it. <laughs> Yeah. For Laszlo. But he stands up for what he believes in. I can respect that. So, Strange the Dreamer. Uh, the second book I want to talk about is Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. And this is not the type of book that I would have been like, wow, I'm gonna love this book. Because it's literally about Shakespeare's family. <laughs> and, um, I'm not a huge Shakespeare fan. However, this isn't about Shakespeare. Which is, I think, why I liked it. It's about his family. It never even mentioned Shakespeare's name. And it essentially just follows his wife, Agnes, and I believe his two or three children. And they're just vibing in a house. And then the plague happens, which was a little too close to home, um, you know, because of the Panini. So that's just a little bit... Because of the Panini? I couldn't relate to any of these characters. Like, I don't know what it's like to be a woman in... Oh, what century? 16th century. And I cannot relate to that at all. But they were just so fleshed out and real. And it made me cry. And there were like five books that made me cry, so that means something. That's Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell. My next book is Bone Gap by Laura Ruby. And this was a book like none other. I have never read a book like this before in my life. Um, it follows a few different characters, but there's the O'Sullivan family. And there's Finn and there's Sean. And it's just them living in their house because their parents have left. Finn is known in his town as Moonface because apparently he just like stares off into the distance and daydreams a lot. And everyone in their town loves Finn because he's just like the town wacko, I suppose. So what made this book so interesting was there's a character named Rosa and she came into the O'Sullivan's life um, just a few months ago and in the course of a few months she became a part of their family and her and sean have fallen in love so when rosa goes missing and finn says that she was kidnapped sean doesn't believe him which is the main point of controversy in this book is that no one believes that finn saw what he saw and everything about this book is wacky finn has a crazy life there's Petey who keeps bees. It's a crazy book, and I recommend it if you want to read a kind of 
contemporary fantasy fiction that you haven't read before. Wow. What, what an interesting title. It also has magical cornfields. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Alrighty. I was originally going to transition this from Heartstopper by saying, like, speaking <laughs> of comforting gay boys, <laughs> that is essentially what this book is about. But it's the sequel to the first one. You might have heard it. It, it won a few awards, you know. But it basically just follows Aristotle and Dante. I think the thing that definitely stands out about the first one and the second one is Ari's narration. It's very angsty <laughs> and very, like, philosophical. I think in the first book, something that put a lot of people off was how angsty it was. And I am pleased to announce, this one is less so. Let's go. And I actually like this one more which I think is a controversial opinion, but the character growth is just astronomical. I stole your chef's kiss. Um, but it is, it's really cool to see how far they've come in like, probably like, I think it's about a year, but. Another thing I'm just gonna add on here, it also talks about the AIDS pandemic, mm -hmm. which I think is something that isn't touched on enough. It's incredible. It is incredible, you should read it. My next book is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig? Yeah. <laughs> Matt Haig. That's what we're going to go with. Um, this book is about Nora. This Nora. No, not that Nora. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about Nora who does attempt to take her own life one night. But then she ends up in the Midnight Library with a kind librarian named Mrs. Elm. And through the course of this book, Nora is able to try different versions of her own life, as if she's opening up a book and reading a different story. So through this, I felt like Nora was able to learn a lot. It was a really incredible book. It taught me so much about like accepting yourself and learning that even if things don't feel all right, like they'll end up okay. And the decisions you make really do have an impact on your future, but you don't have to regret the things that you did. I really enjoyed it. Five out of five stars. Uh, the Midnight Library by Matt Haig. So my next book is Know My Name by Chanel Miller, and it's a memoir that follows protagonist um, Chanel Miller, that's how memoirs work, who you might know as Emily Doe in the Stanford Sexual Assault Case. It's a very sad book, obviously, but she still managed to make it hopeful, which I think was very powerful. Obviously take a lot of breaks while reading this. It's very dark and obviously it's about partly like sexual assault victims. Um, so obviously check that. But one quote that really stood out to me was towards the end about why she wrote the book essentially. And it's, I write because the most healing words I have been given are, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to fall apart because that's what happens when you are broken, but I want victims to know they will not be left here, that we will be alongside them as they rebuild. So, that's No My Name by Chanel Miller. My next book is Affair of Poisons by Addie Thorley, which takes place in the 18th century, um, and it's about the bastard son of King Louis XIV, and also the daughter of a poisoner. This is based on a real event, but like if things had gone a bit differently, there is a plot to poison King Louis. Well, there are multiple plots to poison King Louis the 14th. And this is a story about if one had gone a bit differently and he had actually died. So it follows Jos and Mirabelle. And Mirabelle is the daughter of the poisoner who kills the king. And her name is La Voison. Through all of this, Jos doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> he just wants to protect his siblings, and they're all really scared that the rebels in France are going to kill them. And he enlists Mirabelle's help. It's crazy. After I finished this book, I had to go and watch about 15 videos on the Affair of Poisons because I couldn't believe that this is an actual event that happened. So it's really interesting that it was based on an actual event if it had gone a bit differently and with a bit more magic. So, the Fair Poisons. My next book is On a Sunbeam by Tilly Walden, and this book 
is very beautiful. So I'm just going to show you a few of my favorite panels while I tell you what it's about. But it follows Mia as she joins this, I think the best way to describe it is sci-fi construction workers as they're like rebuilding these ruins in space, which is just a very cool concept. And I will just say the found family trope is very, very present. Okay. If you like found family, you're going to love this book. So it follows her with that crew as well as going back in time to her time at boarding school. I don't want to know how long this took to make, but it's artwork that you can still read and that is just a magnificent concept. This is the UK cover as well. The US cover is not as beautiful. Just like, look this at this. This is gorgeous. Here, I'll zoom in. But like, <laughs> the color palette okay. is called a manual zoom in. Yeah. That's true, we could have done that with <laughs> <laughs> Next, I have Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. This is about Wallace, who is a terrible person and how he dies. <laughs> that sounds awful. I promise it isn't. It's very wholesome. After he dies, he is found by May, who takes his ghost to see Hugo, who works in a fantastical tea shop. Hugo's purpose is to help Wallace accept himself and move on to the next life. I love ghosts. I think the concept <laughs> of ghosts is so cool, so fun, and I love seeing how Wallace and Hugo were able to help each other grow and become better people. And I highly recommend it. So my next book is The Prior of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And as you can probably tell, this is a mammoth of a book. I think that's probably what it's most famous for. But it is a fantasy book and it follows a queen, her lady-in-waiting, and a dragon rider. So if that doesn't sound interesting, I don't think I can sell this to you, I'm sorry. As you can imagine by the cover, it has dragons, it has drama, it has oranges. <laughs> Very casually. You like fruit. This book's for you. Also because there is a sapphic relationship. It's fruity in many ways. But the world building was phenomenal. That was my favorite part. It's just such an interesting world and the magic system is epic. <laughs> this is a very effective procrastination tool. If you were like me and just don't want to do your French homework, just read this instead. <laughs> it works really well. Plus you look cool reading such a big book, so I would recommend. I do have a quote. No woman should be made to fear that she was not enough. Very cool book, 10 out of 10, and I would recommend it. My next book is Sisters of Sword and Song by Rebecca Ross. This follows two sisters, Halcyon and Evadne. Halcyon has been in the army for the past eight years, and Evadne really misses her. So when she comes back on the run from her commander, who hates her, uh, Evadne knows something is wrong. At the trial, Halcyon is sentenced to 15 years of prison and labor, and Evadne takes five away from her. Because they love each other, and they're sisters, and I love them. Mm -hmm. So Evadne is figuring out what happened to her sister, and Halcyon has to figure out how to get herself out of the mess she got into. It's very lovely. I love sibling relationships. I love family. And that's what this book is all about, is adventure and family. So my final book is This Is How You Lose the Time War. It follows time travelers as they leave letters to each other. It is only about 200 pages, so it's fairly short. I will say there are a lot of allusions and references in this book that <laughs> I just didn't get. <laughs> but <laughs> if you do get them, then you're like, wow, I am intelligent. <laughs> it's pretty cerebral in that sense because it's slow and formulaic at the beginning. But then it starts slowly building towards this crescendo of an ending that I had to read several times because I was just, I was so shook. Okay. The ending sells this book for sure. I'd like to read a quote because that's how I feel about this book. It was very cold out on the ice. Your letter warmed me. So there you go. If you want some- A sense of romance? Oh, oh, maybe, <laughs> maybe. You'll have to read and find out. Uh, now for my honorable <laughs> mention. So Nora had so many books she read this year and loved that we had to give her an allowance and let her talk about <laughs> two to. more books. My first honorable mention that didn't quite make it is Sadie by Courtney Summers. And this is a mystery podcast thriller contemporary. And it follows 19 year old Sadie when her younger sister Maddie goes missing and she tries to track her down. But it also has another viewpoint of this guy running a podcast 
that's following the clue she left behind while he tries to track her down as well. But you feel like it's a true crime podcast, so that's very cool. I will say, definitely check the trigger warnings on this one. It's very dark, and the ending oh, is very, very um, dramatic and shocking. I, I can't stop thinking about it. It's been like six months. So definitely pick it up, but be careful. My second book is Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. You have definitely heard of this book. If not, you are living under a rock, and I'm very sorry for you. And it follows Alex, the son of the President of the United States, and a British prince named Henry, as they are forced into a friendship in order to maintain the relationship, like, a, you know, England and America. <laughs> that slowly starts to turn into something more, so, you know. I know Enemies to Lovers is really popular, but why would you love Enemies to Lovers when you could read a book with enemies to fake friends to friends to lovers? You got all the tropes yeah, in Yeah, all of the tropes. It does have a character named Nora. You know it's good. Just saying. <laughs> I just need a moment. Yeah, that was a lot. That was a wow. Well, thank you for watching this video. We'd love to hear what your favorite books were. And we hope that our books of 2021 can become your books of 2022. Okay, we're ending. Have a good day! <laughs> Bye! <laughs>